Hi, good morning. Um, my name is Dr. Moftikar. I'm a neurosurgeon at Prisma Health in Columbia. Uh, we're the section of neurosurgery affiliated with University of South Carolina. Today, I'm going to be talking about a very unique disease, um, not very common, but as you'll see later on in the presentation, it is a very serious disease process. It's called Moya Moya. So what is Moya Moya disease? So it's a disease of the blood vessels in the brain, and it's mainly the internal carotid arteries. So what that means is that the carotid arteries actually become narrow over time. And this is a genetic uh, trouble in patients. So it's not a um, associated disease process because of lifestyle, such as high blood pressure, smoking cigarettes, but it is actually a genetic disease where the mainly the carotid arteries in the brain become narrow over time. What's interesting is that the back of the brain also has blood vessels called vertebral basilar artery, and they seem to be unaffected most of the time um, in this disease process. The smaller blood vessels form in the brain as collateral. So what that means is since the patient doesn't really have a competent internal carotid artery in the brain, small blood vessels called collaterals form over time to try to make up for the lack of perfusion in the brain. These collaterals are called moya-moya vessels. So then you might ask yourself, why is this called moya-moya? It was termed in Japan a long time ago in the 1960s, and it refers to a puff of smoke. The reason that it's referred to as a puff of smoke or moya moya is if you look at the picture of the blood vessels on your right-hand side, you'll see that there are all these very tiny vessels that are coming off of the carotid artery, and they resemble a puff of smoke. And that's why it's termed moya moya. So that's how the Japanese described it in the 60s. The clinical presentation of moya moya could vary, but mainly it's a stroke-like symptom or a transient ischemic attack. You might have heard of the word TIA or the phrase TIA. So it's a stroke-like syndrome or symptom. The person who's affected and is symptomatic could have a drooping face, mainly on one side, could have weakness in the arms or legs, mainly on one side, numbness in the arms or legs, mainly in the one, on one side, and it could present with speech problems, such as inability to speak or understand. And please understand that it doesn't have to be all of these signs. It could be one or all, or it could be two. So it varies depending on where in the brain. Most of the time, this, these symptoms take place, but they go away with some time and less than 24 hours. But there are circumstances where this could actually persist more than 24 hours. And that's when the patient or the person has had a full on stroke. So what to expect if you have Moya Moya or you've been diagnosed with Moya Moya? So the first thing to understand is Moya Moya could be just found by accident, no symptoms. It could be just accidentally found. As an example, a person falls, they hit their head. This was purely an accident, such as tripping on something. They're brought to the emergency room or to the hospital and a scan of the head is done and a scan of the head could reveal that the carotid arteries have moya moya type of changes. And neurosurgery is consulted to take a closer look at this. However, most patients are diagnosed because of symptoms. And those symptoms, as I mentioned on the previous slides, are stroke symptoms or TIAs or transient ischemic attacks. The diagnosis is made by various imaging modalities, one of them being a CAT scan angiogram of the brain. So you could expect that the first thing is a CAT scan with CAT scan angiogram of the brain. The CAT scan angiogram 
is looking at the blood vessels in the brain. And they will most likely reveal that there are these tiny little vessels called the moya moya vessels and the internal carotid artery is incompetent or doesn't have the character of a healthy blood vessel. The next process or the imaging modality is a cerebral angiogram. And I would like to talk more about that. A formal cerebral angiogram is a test which is somewhat invasive, but extremely important and fruitful. It shows lots of information. It's done by a neurosurgeon or a neurointerventional radiologist or a neurologist. And what we do is we go through the blood vessel with a catheter all the way to the carotid arteries in the neck. From there, we inject dye while taking x-ray pictures. The advantage of a cerebral angiogram is that it's a dynamic study, meaning that we could look at the different phases of the blood vessels in the brain, which has the advantage over just a CAT scan. And that's why we recommend many times the cerebral angiogram to the patient. The cerebral angiogram that we perform has small risks to it, about 1% or less coded in the literature of stroke-like symptoms, any type of blood vessel injury, contrast allergy, kidney issues. So the risks are there, but small, but the test gives us lots of information. The next test could be an MRI of the brain, looking for any type of permanent stroke. And once that MRI is done, we could see whether or not the patient has had a permanent stroke or was this just a transient ischemic attack or TIA. Other tests through the CAT scan, such as perfusion studies, are done here at Prisma Health, which are pretty advanced imaging of Moya Moya. In terms of medical management, for Moya Moya, usually medical management is not a cure, but it is a way of doing something in terms of medication to try to hopefully improve the process, but please don't please understand that it is not a cure or a solution for it. The medical management is usually aspirin. So patients with Moya Moya, majority of times are put on an aspirin. Then the next thing that could be considered is a surgical management. And I like to take some time and talk about this surgical management, which we do here at Prisma Health. We do what's called a bypass surgery for patients with Moya Moya. And there are two types of bypass surgery, direct versus indirect. And I'll go into some detail. So in a process for a bypass surgery for the brain, a blood vessel from the scalp area, which is the underneath the scalp, is called a superficial temporal artery. You can actually feel that in front of your own ear. If you were to put two fingers in front of your ear, you could feel the pulsation. And that's the scalp blood vessel called a superficial temporal artery. That artery is actually brought into the brain and sewn into one of the blood vessels in the brain. And that's what this diagram is depicting, this picture where the blood vessel is actually brought in and it, was, it is sewn into a brain blood vessel. What this does is over immediately and over time, it gives the extra blood flow that is needed to the brain. And this is called a direct bypass for the brain. There is another way of doing this surgery, which is also very acceptable. And that is taking that superficial temporal artery or the scalp blood vessel and laying it on the brain. What that does is in Moya Moya, since there's a starvation for blood flow and there are factors that are being produced in the brain to make new blood vessels, 
the harvested superficial temporal artery, which is laid on the brain, arborizes new blood vessels over time. Generally speaking, this new blood vessel arborization or generation of new blood vessels could take three to six months. So the advantage of the direct bypass could be that there is an immediate supply of blood flow since it's sewn in to the blood vessel in the brain. The indirect bypass doesn't give you immediate blood flow, but it does make new blood vessels in Moya Moya over time. And again, that could take three to six months. Both surgeries are very acceptable and they're good solutions for someone with Moya Moya who is symptomatic or is having signs and symptoms of a stroke or transient ischemic attack. I like to take a few minutes to talk about what to expect after the surgery. These surgeries could take anywhere from two to four or five hours. They're done under general anesthesia. They're, the patient is completely asleep. And after the surgery, they go to the ICU and they are carefully watched in a neurological unit type of ICU for blood pressure control, neurological issues, and so forth. Most of the time, the hospital stay, and on average, is anywhere between three to four days in the hospital. And total recovery could take anywhere between two to six weeks, depending on how surgery has gone and depending on how the patient is doing neurologically. After the surgery, the patient must be careful in terms of keeping hydrated, maintaining a normal blood pressure, and then taking their aspirin. This is a critical period because just because the surgery was done, it doesn't mean that there's an immediate revascularization or an immediate supply of blood flow. So we have to make sure that the patient keeps hydrated. And in fact, I would uh, recommend to patients with Moya Moya to take the aspirin, keep hydrated, maintain a normal blood pressure. The worst thing is dehydration during especially the hot summer South Carolina times. Six months after the surgery, we would recommend an, another cerebral angiogram, and that's the catheter angiogram, to confirm the surgery has worked. So we are looking for new blood vessels that have formed through the direct or indirect bypass surgery. So that's when we see if this surgery has been successful. After this process, we continue to follow our patients. So another six months, there could be a CAT scan based angiogram or another formal cerebral angiogram, depending on what the first test has shown us. And we, most of the time, continue to follow the patients over their lifetime. Another point that I like to make is that there are folks with Moya Moya who have Moya Moya on both sides of the brain. And that's referred to as Moya Moya disease versus patients who have Moya Moya on one side of the brain only, and that is called Moya Moya syndrome. In patients with the disease, which is affecting both sides of the brain, the surgery could be done on both sides, but most of the time, there is a gap between the first surgery and the second surgery. We would like to space that out. The last point that I like to make is patients with sickle cell anemia are more prone to having Moya Moya. And we have treated many patients with sickle cell anemia and associated Moya Moya. And those patients are known to have Moya Moya type syndrome. 
when it's associated with sickle cell anemia. The cerebral angiography after the surgery hopefully looks like this. As you can see, there are where the arrows are, are new blood vessels that have formed in the brain because of the bypass surgery that has been um, instituted. So the bypass surgery has increased the amount of blood to the brain. So the brain that is starving or was starving for blood flow now has additional help from our bypass surgery. At this point in time, I'd like to thank everyone for paying attention. And if you have any further questions, we would be definitely available at Prisma Health Neurosurgery.